So in light of this Steve ban that most Smash communities are enacting, I figured, hey, we should talk about amiibo meta bans, and specifically which amiibo often get banned. Because amiibo is interesting too. The community tends to have a bizarre array of opinions about which amiibo are banworthy and which aren't. Unlike Human Smash or other competitive metas, the amiibo meta is constrained by the AI of the amiibo and the qualities of the character that amiibo encompasses. Because of this, we can't just tell people to train better to improve their amiibo. Amiibo training is really just trying to make the best of a bad character or AI. So it's not really a situation where a skilled low tier can consistently whoop a high tier, even though that does happen in rare circumstances. The end result of all of this is that it's sometimes hard to tell what's actually broken in the meta versus what is just a random deviation from the long-term performance of that amiibo. We've decided that it's generally best to just let the tournament organizers make their final call on who's banned for that tournament and let the trainers decide if they want to enter a tournament with that rule set. These are some of the amiibo that tend to get banned the most. See the amiibo tier list at amiibodoctor.com slash tier list for reference if you need it, and there's timestamps for when you get bored and want to go to the next one. If you watched the documentary, or you're familiar with competitive Pokemon, this shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Incineroar is the only universal ban that basically everyone, except for new trainers, can agree on. Incineroar's got several tools that help him exploit Amiibo AI and just generally be the best Amiibo. Granted, he doesn't have Intimidate or Fake Out anymore, but he doesn't need it. He has the Alolan Whip problem. In the Alolan Whip problem, the Amiibo basically gets grabbed every time Alolan Whip is thrown out, unless they're already moving away or they interrupt the Whip with a projectile or some other reason. But that's pretty rare. It tends to connect about 90 to 95% of the time. So all this Incineroar needs to do is spam the hell out of Alolan Whip, and only Alolan Whip, until he wins. And it's fairly easy to train an Incineroar to do this. Uh, every amiibo trainer I know, except for myself, has managed to succeed. That's not all he's got going for him, though. Let's not forget that in the amiibo meta, being bulky is actually an advantage, and Incineroar's got plenty of bulk. He's slightly heavier than Kazuya, weighing at 116 weight units. Typically in human play, weight isn't so helpful, because it leaves him open to being comboed. But remember, we're dealing with amiibo here, and the few amiibo that have competent combos can't avoid getting a Alolan whipped. So his weight just makes him all the more survivable. Oh yeah, and the devs were also like, hey, you know how Incineroar has a pretty linear recovery? Let's make sure that the amiibo recovers, pixel perfectly, back to the ledge in the best possible way. The Incineroar AI knows the right order of jumping, Alolan whipping, and finally up specialing to recover to the ledge far better than you'd expect. Oh, but Doc, you say, why don't Amiibo try to edgeguard him? Well, sometimes they do, but one of two things tends to happen. The first thing that happens is that they get hit by his up special on the way down and die with him. That's not so fun. The second thing that sometimes happens is that because Incineroar tends to recover from pretty much directly below the ledge, he's really, really hard for an amiibo to edgeguard. Not so much for us humans, because we can predict his behavior easily, but amiibo don't have that capability. Incineroar is also kind of funny in spirits. The Alolan Whip problem doesn't go away, but it does get very slightly nerfed. See, spirits opens up some new movement possibilities, chief among them being Instadrop. Instadrop, as you might interpret, instantly drops the user, hence the name, and it adds a small hitbox as they fall. I know, it's a deceptive name, it took me hours to understand what it meant. Well, and I can't speak authoritatively to this myself, because spirits isn't really my cup of tea, but I've been told that Instadrop tends to give Alolan Whip a slightly harder time. The Instadrop using Amiibo, if trained to be jumpy enough, can hit Incineroar during a lowland whip by jumping before its activation, which would mean it would just generally have to be in the air, and then dropping onto the wrestling kitty, which sets it up for further comboing. You remember Omega Luigi? That was his shtick. Insta drop into up special. Worked pretty well against Incineroar. But this insta drop loadout really isn't that effective against anything besides Incineroar, and the amiibo that are best suited to use insta drop also tend to, um, well, they suck. So Incineroar is not getting unbanned, ever. The Amiibo community has had functioning Kazuya Amiibo for over a year now since he was patched into the game, so we've had a lot of time to lab. 
He hasn't shown up on the de facto official tier list, the USAC one that I host on my site, but I've no doubt that now that he's actually officially released and legal to use in tournaments, the new tier list will feature a nice big Kazuya right at the top next to Incineroar. If Incineroar is U tier, Kazuya is like U minus tier. Beatable in theory, but rarely in practice. If you didn't get a Kazuya amiibo, you've probably at least seen him in action on this channel or on another significantly less cool YouTube channel. You'll have noticed that Kazuya's combo toolkit has what we call uh, everything. He's got all of it. He's got the crouch dash, dragon uppercut thing, electric wind god fist, down smash at the ledge, all of it. Some guy in the dev team really wanted to pick up girls at the bar, and he decided the Kazuya Amiibo AI was the best way to do that. Sidebar for a moment. Do you remember my video, the Steve Amiibo Changes Everything? It's got this really cool thumbnail that I'm very proud of. In that video, I argued that Steve's AI had so many options that it chose randomly that there was no way an opposing Amiibo trainer could plan to cover all of the options. Well, Kazi is like that as well, but times 10. Unlike Steve's options, many of which are decent but not consistently great or powerful, Kazuya is just phenomenal all around the board. All of his options are at least pretty good. You can fight a Kazuya that edge guards with the eye laser things, or one that edge guards with down smash. It can use crouch dash and a dragon uppercut on the stage, or the 10 hit combo. Maybe your Kazuya opponent drops a side B up close and follows up with it, or maybe it just throws out a blind forward smash and tanks your response with his super armor. Strategizing around Kazuya's options just isn't a thing because he has so many, and the amiibo will never stick to just one all the time. Let's not forget that he's also got one of the best recoveries, if not the best recovery, in competitive amiibo. Kazuya basically has two up specials. When he's not interrupted or edge guarded, Kazuya can recover from basically the lowest corner of the blast zone so long as he has his second jump and up special. There's very few other amiibo that can enjoy that kind of distance. The amiibo is also smart enough to air dodge Pixel perfectly if he can't quite make it, so your amiibo is going to have to be very persistent if he's going to gimp Kazuya's recovery. But guess what? Amiibo aren't very persistent when gimping. They've gotten better over the years, but they're still not great. Oh yeah, and uh, once per stock, he gets a rage drive that he typically connects. And it usually takes most or all of the opponent's stock. You know, just in case nothing else in his kit managed to kill you already. <laughs> ah, the nostalgia. Bowser was the first Universal Amiibo ban, all the way back in October 2019. Makes me feel young again. Bowser's the archetypal good Amiibo. He's a super heavyweight who does a lot of damage and knockback, and his recovery doesn't get gimped all that much. His AI doesn't have any glaring flaws, and you can't really be on the defensive against him. It's not surprising that he's still in S tier all these years later. Curiously, Bowser doesn't get banned much anymore, which is a rare occurrence in the amiibo meta. In fact, I don't know of any amiibo that have been universally banned and then unbanned, except for Bowser. He didn't get unbanned because he somehow got worse either. His AI is pretty much exactly the same as it was on release day, it's probably some small changes here and there, and his character got a teensy buff in the years since. So why did Bowser get unbanned? No, no, no. Bowser isn't banned anymore, because his competition got better. Bowser got power creeped back into normality by the likes of King K. Rool, Terry, Byleth, and so on. His comfy, empty S tier got filled up with a lot of amiibo that are just plain better than Bowser. So having amiibo that are as broken as Bowser got kind of normalized. Bowser's a lot less of a problem than somebody like Terry or Byleth, and most tournament hosts prefer to just ban every S tier amiibo for their tournament rather than specifically singling out Bowser. So S tier bans are really the only time that Bowser gets banned these days. There's many more amiibo that occasionally get banned from tournaments, namely every S tier amiibo ever, but Min Min's the last interesting one on this list. Min Min's kinda off and on the best legal amiibo on the tier list, depending on Kazuya's legality. She's probably the number three amiibo in the game, so for purposes of this video, we'll consider her to be the number one legal amiibo, but behind Incineroar and Kazuya. I'm sure somebody will disagree with that, because if there's one thing amiibo trainers can agree on, it's a disagreeing on things. 
but that's what we'll assume going forward. Min Min's banned status fluctuates, depending on the tournament host. Some hosts see her as being strictly legal and allow her. Most hosts see her as a pain in the butt to watch and therefore ban her. And some hosts see her as being ban-worthy strictly because she's powerful enough, in their opinion, to be banned. I don't imagine that it's hard to guess what she's banned for. She's Min Min. Her whole game is not playing the game. Even the worst Min Min's camp out their opponent pretty well. All you have to do is teach her to use forward tilt and smash and stuff, and you've got at least a decent Min Min. And she only improves from there by learning how to use up smashes anti-air and such to catch falling opponents. Point is, the worst Min Min's are still pretty good. This is all well and good for the Min Min, but it sucks to fight against. Amiibo AI isn't complicated enough to realize that it's getting camped out, let alone figure out how to avoid the dragon head things. So really it's just up to RNG whether the opponent amiibo can get through Min Min's defenses, and, spoiler warning, that's not a favorable dice rule for the opponent. If a Min Min can parry and use up smash, a lot of her bases are covered. Some characters can pull it off though. The other day, I hosted a vanilla tournament where Grand Finals came down to a Shulk trained by Soy Sauce, who faced a Min Min trained by Soy Sauce's greatest rival, also Soy Sauce. Soy Sauce won in the end, which to Soy Sauce's dismay, further deepening Soy Sauce's rivalry with Soy Sauce, but more importantly, it showed us that a well-trained and appropriately mobile sword fighter might put up a fight against Min Min. Don't get me wrong, the Shulk won two of his four sets against Min Min, which isn't a meta-changing record by any means. But if you're given the opportunity to counterpick against a Min Min amiibo, and you have a sword fighter that plays like the Shulk from the tournament VOD I posted on the second channel, you might consider giving him a shot. Maybe. Even if sword fighters do tend to bully Min Min, they won't impact the tier list in any real way. The most mobile sword fighters are B plus tier or lower, so they tend to get squashed by the other top tiers that they'll encounter in a typical tournament bracket. Link and Byleth are the only top tier sword fighters, but they're not in the air often enough to do any real damage to a decent Min Min without some good RNG. I personally hate Min Min and think we should have gotten Shrek instead, but until the amiibo community embraces modding, we're kind of stuck with her. So I recommend banning her from your tournaments as well, just to keep things from getting boring. Ultimately, because amiibo bans are up to the tournament organizer, and because the amiibo has had several years of weird and interesting tournaments, there's many more one-off instances of bans I could talk about, but these are the four that tend to get banned the most. Thank you for watching. Something something, leave a like and subscribe whatever the kids say these days.